So you wanna go vegan, or maybe you're already vegan, but you don't feel like you've gotten the hang of it yet, or maybe you're thinking about it, you're not sure yet, you wanna learn a little bit more. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you all the vegan essentials you need to have a healthy, happy, and delicious vegan lifestyle. There are a lot of different ways to eat as a vegan. You can be fully raw, you can be a fruitarian, high carb, low fat. You can actually just eat Oreos and still be a vegan because they're vegan as well. But the healthiest way and the easiest way to eat is simply to eat a whole foods vegan diet, meaning you're eating plenty of whole grains, legumes, fruits, vegetables, healthy seeds, nuts, and all those things. And by eating that way, you'll get all the nutrients you need. All the protein, all the healthy fats, all the fiber, nutrients like minerals and vitamins and amino acids, all of that. And also make sure that you're cooking at home for yourself most of the time so that you know what's in your food. And of course that will help you stay healthy. One nutrient that I do recommend supplementing is B12. It's very important for your nervous system, and whether or not you're vegan, you should probably be taking a B12 supplement. Now, there's a lot of information about B12, so I'm gonna link to some of that below so you can learn more and figure out how much you should be taking. I'm an ambassador for Mega Food, a supplement company, and I take quite a few of their supplements, not on a regular basis, but for example, zinc. This is a supplement that I take whenever I feel like I might be getting a cold or something. But zinc you can also get from your food. It's just nice to have a little bit of a boost certain times of the year. I also have the Blood Builder supplement from Mega Food, which is an iron supplement. Now, I don't take this often because I've never had a deficiency with iron because I get all the iron I need from my food. Iron comes from greens, whole grains, legumes. Another thing that helps absorb iron is vitamin C. So if you're eating a healthy vegan diet, you're gonna get all of that. However, some people do need to supplement iron. Maybe you had a baby recently, maybe you're losing a lot of blood with your period. This blood builder iron supplement is really wonderful to take. And if you don't get enough sunshine, you might want to think about supplementing with vitamin D. Super important, just make sure that the vitamin D you take is vegan. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you're eating a healthy whole food vegan diet, you can eat more volume than if you're eating a standard American diet. So that's one thing a lot of people get confused about because I know we're so often taught that if we're gonna be healthy, then we should have smaller portions of food. Not the case when you're eating vegetables and fruits and all these things. So make sure you eat a bounty of food. Eat as much as you need to feel full, to feel energized, because food is your fuel. Eat as much as you need to be alive, to be happy, to feel energized. If you're feeling tired, if you're feeling hungry, then that probably means that you should be eating more of the good food. how many times someone has told me that they want to go vegan but they can't because you can't afford it or simply don't have enough time but the truth is eating a healthy delicious colorful vegan diet does not have to be expensive and if you manage your time well it doesn't have to take a lot of time either the essentials of a vegan diet are actually very inexpensive. It's only when you spend money on the specialty items like spirulina and maca powder and goji berries and all that that it gets pricey. But you don't need all that to be healthy. You just need the basic necessities. Okay, but what about organic versus conventional? If you can afford organic food, then more power to you. But it's most important to make sure that you're eating a vegan diet, even if it's conventional produce. The best way to get around all this, to get rid of all the confusion, as long as you live in a place where you have access to it, is to shop at a farmer's market. Oftentimes, the farmers at the farmer's market can't afford the organic USDA certification, but if you talk to them and ask them, is this grown with pesticides? Do you use X, Y, and Z on this produce? Then they will tell you yes or no. By shopping at the farmer's market, you can save money and better know exactly what you're getting. Planning out your meals in advance can really help you save time and money. 
Follow a meal plan so that you know what you're going to be eating every single day throughout the week. I also like to do meal prep at the beginning of the week so that my refrigerator is stocked. I spend a little time, usually about an hour and a half to two and a half hours, prepping all my food for the week. It's all in the refrigerator, so all I have to do is take it out when I want to eat it and my meal is done. So much time saved. That's also a great way to save money because you're less likely to be eating out at restaurants. I have so many videos about saving time and saving money as a vegan, so make sure you check those videos out as well. I'm gonna link them below. If you have a little bit more money, but not enough time, then you can always buy pre-prepped vegetables, canned beans, and things like that to help you save time in the kitchen. One thing I love to use are mushrooms. Mushrooms tend to be a little pricier, but cooking them is a breeze. All you have to do is toss them with a little olive oil and salt and put them in the oven or do a quick saute. Hardly any prep work involved. At first, when you're starting out, it can be a challenge to do healthy, cheap, and fast all together, but it can be done. Eventually, it becomes second nature. The challenge is gone. It's easy, and I've got a lot of resources to help you, and I know that you can do this. So if you want to eat a healthy, delicious vegan diet, you should make sure that your kitchen is always well stocked. In your kitchen, you should always keep whole grains. That includes brown rice, quinoa, oats, farro, frica. Also make sure you have legumes like beans, lentils, and peas, always. Almost every meal I have includes whole grains and legumes. In my kitchen, I also always keep greens. Greens like kale, collard greens, spinach, arugula. And there's so many different greens and so many different ways to eat them. Also, you guys know I'm a sweet potato soul and I love sweet potatoes, so I always have plenty of sweet potatoes and other starchy vegetables. You can use these in almost any type of dish. I also love keeping fruit in my house because it's a super easy, delicious, sweet, and healthy snack. Also, Nuts and seeds are great snacks and they make your meals so much tastier and add so much more texture. So make sure you always have those in your kitchen too. And of course, when you're putting together a meal, it's super important to have plenty of spices. So I have a whole spice cabinet full of spices and I also like to make my own sauces. I make my own dressings, tomato sauces, curry sauces, and I always make sure that I have the ingredients to make them on hand. However, if you don't have time to make your own sauces, make sure that you buy pre-made sauces at the store and keep them in your fridge or in your kitchen. Whole foods taste great on their own. However, Spicing up your food is really what takes it to the next level, makes it delicious, makes you want to continue eating this way forever and ever. Now, if you're just transitioning to a vegan diet for the very first time, you might be craving some of your old foods, or even if you haven't started transitioning, you might feel like, I would go vegan, but I can't give up cheese or chicken. Well, there are vegan alternatives for cheese and chicken, and they're super tasty. The technology has come a long way. You can trick people with this stuff, and you can trick yourself too, and you can go vegan too, so make sure you try all of these delicious vegan alternatives to animal products, especially if you don't think that you can do a vegan diet because you can't give those things up. I promise you, you can give those things up by eating the vegan alternative to them. So I understand that in social situations, it might be tricky and some people feel like, I don't know if I can go vegan because my whole family is not vegan and I don't have any vegan friends, but it is 2018, you can go vegan and your friends and family will respect you and you can live your life. So say for instance, you're going out to eat with your friends or family and you guys are not going to a vegan restaurant. First of all, I recommend calling ahead. Obviously you could just look on their website first, but if you don't see anything that stands out, if you call ahead, oftentimes the chef will offer to make you a vegan meal. It's happened to me multiple times and that vegan meal that the chef made especially for you is usually even better than what everybody else is eating. 
If you're going to a social event where you're afraid that there won't be food, say like a potluck or a party, you can always bring your own food with you. Of course, bring enough to share with everybody because once they see your vegan food, they're going to want to try it as well. I've been vegan for almost seven years and I cannot tell you how much it's changed since I first went vegan. Nowadays, non-vegans are often the first ones to want to try your vegan dish. And if you're really going somewhere where you cannot eat anything, you cannot bring your own food, make sure you eat ahead of time. And if you can, bring your own snacks with you. If you're concerned that being vegan is gonna be difficult for you because of your cultural and traditional foods, don't worry. You can actually make your traditional foods vegan. So I'm from the South and I grew up eating soul food. But instead of just never eating soul food again or saying that I can't be vegan, I worked to veganize all of my favorite traditional foods. Everything from chicken and waffles, to sweet potato pie, to pound cake. I have veganized it all. And you can do that from whatever culture you're from. I also really recommend looking into the history of your traditional foods. A lot of our traditional foods from all around the world are plant-based in origin. And it isn't until much more recently that animal products started becoming like a big part of it. Traditions are always changing, so it makes a lot of sense to me that you could simply take your culture back to its plant-based roots. I wrote a lot about this in my cookbook actually, which is coming out. You can order it now. <laughs> there are so many awesome vegan cookbooks that explore different types of cuisine. So Indian vegan, soul food vegan, um, African vegan, Caribbean vegan, Thai vegan, Chinese vegan. There are also a lot of restaurants that are devoted to all different types of vegan cuisine. I went to a Cuban vegan restaurant the other day. One of my favorite restaurants here in LA is a Thai vegan restaurant. There's a, an amazing Ethiopian vegan restaurant here. Anything can be veganized in a super delicious and authentic way, so don't let that hold you back. It's also super important to make sure that you have your vegan crew, your support group, so I understand that a lot of people don't have vegan friends already. Most of my friends and family members are not vegan, so it's important to get some vegan friends in your life. You can join a meetup group, of course, online. There are so many opportunities to connect with other vegans, whether it be Reddit groups or Facebook or here on YouTube. Whatever it takes, make sure you get at least one vegan friend so that you guys can be vegan buddies and support each other. Lastly, it's super important to remember why you started this vegan diet and also to stay motivated while you're living this lifestyle, especially at the very beginning. Because like once you're a few years in, like me, there's no motivation required. This is just the way you live. So I recommend watching movies, reading books, and just generally learning more about why it's so important to be vegan, why it's important for you, your health, animals, and also the environment. I recommend things like Cowspiracy, What the Health, which you've probably already seen. Also books like Skinny Bitch, The Veganist, Afroism, Diet for a New America. There's so much and there are so many cookbooks. Mine is coming out soon. Make sure you pre-order it, link below. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you remember to stay motivated. And if you follow the tips from this video, make my recipes, follow the meal plan, then you'll be totally fine and you'll be so, so happy that you chose the vegan lifestyle. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you're already vegan, a seasoned vegan like me, make sure that you look at the comments, give some help, give some advice to people who need it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notifications button so you know when I release a new video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.